Wow, interesting. So the question is, do, do people under stress vote opposition or vote the ruling party? We will know on 10 July, evening of 10 July, we will know. And uh, we will, that's why we are, we are going all out. Our ground campaign, our electronic campaign, we are going all out. We cannot assume that uh, the traditional way of gaining votes would work. Huh? That would be the door to door, your walkabout. Even your walkabout is curtailed. Huh? You have to wear masks, you have to practice social distance and not more than five campaigners at, a, at one stretch. As I said, uh, we are all going in with our with one hand behind our back and it's not going to be easy, but we must try for the sake of our children and our grandchildren. We want two-thirds in parliament. We have a lot of ideas. We want to contribute. We want to make this nation an inclusive nation, not an exclusive one, not them versus us. It's all of us together as part of a nation, contributing ideas, not them against us, right? Or us against them. So back to the question, how do we persuade this middle ground people, uh, the swing voters? COVID-19 will be a test bait, uh, a kind of experiment for sociologists and political scientists, whether under stress, how do people behave? The traditional view is that they look for security under the incumbent. They feel safe with the incumbent because the incumbent got 61 years track record. Opposition, no track record. But we are not asking to govern the nation. Eh? We are asking to have two third, 32 seats, one third majority. And truly, if the fence sitters can think, eh, they are not forming the government, give it to them. Maybe they have brighter idea in coping with the COVID-19 crisis. And maybe with 32 in parliament, the incumbent will be very careful when they impose rulings or come up with law or when they have measures, when they introduce measures. They will think of the 32 in parliament. Every time they make an announcement, they think of in parliament, they're going to face 32 alternative parties MP who will question them, put them on their toe. In my press conference, I say you look at New Zealand, you look at Taiwan, you look at South Korea, they have very strong opposition. So the, the ruling party got to think twice before they do anything. They have to think of how to answer the alternative parties in parliament. PAP government is always very proud to say we are unique in doing things. We are uniquely Singapore. We have COE, we have ERP. We have NCMP, we have NMP, uniquely Singapore. Only Singapore has got GRC also, GRC. Everywhere is SMC. In Singapore, you have GRC. At one stage, what's a mega GRC, six member GRC. Now they, they wake up and say, why do you need such a big GRC to bring a minority into parliament? A three member GRC, you can bring one minority in. So it's a lot of illogical logic or logical, illogical, logical, illogic, or illogical logic, which is very frustrating and bad for mental health. Right? It's very bad for mental health when there's no clarity of values. Yeah? No clarity of values. Suddenly you wake up, oh, we need an Indian, uh, we need a non-Chinese president. And then at the same time, we don't need a non-Chinese prime minister. We're not ready the non-Chinese Prime Minister. So people are very confused. No clear values, no clear principles. So, swing voters, please wake up, give us a chance to tell you that don't worry, Singapore will always be there. The civil service will be there, the police will be there, the military will be there. The PAP has fewer seats, that's all. Instead of 90%, maybe now they have 66% of seats, and they won't crumble. Maybe they work harder. Maybe next round, <laughs> they will shine even better. So COVID-19 make people compare the PAP government with other government and see how they perform versus other government. Of course, you cannot include the West because the West is a different ball game. We're talking about Asian. We compare apples and apples, oranges and oranges. 
even that numb, uh, they, 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 are quite, uh, they handled the whole thing quite well. A very simple example, transparency. It's a value, uh, transparency. You tell us, today we have 235 cases among the foreign workers. But you never tell us how many you tested. So the 238 could be out of 1,000 tested. Then that's a very high number. But if it's out of 10,000 tested, then it's a very small number. So it's not about absolute, you know. It is about percentage. Dr. Fauzi, advising President Donald Trump, said it very clear. It's not an absolute figure we're looking for. It's the percentage that we are worried about. How many you test and how many are found to be positive. That is the percentage we are to be worried about. <laughs> not absolute. Absolute tells me nothing. And today we have five community cases. So it's not zero. Eh? It's not zero. So don't ever think that we are safe to have election. But what to do? They want to, they are very in a hurry to get a mandate. In a hurry to get a mandate. So the swing voters, you ask yourself, are they interested in your life or your health? Or their own fresh mandate? 